Now, my next guest is one of our most outspoken poets. She's a contrarian who rails against everything from religion to the Celtic tiger, but she also writes the odd sexy poem. She's just back from Vegas. Please welcome Rita Ann Higgins. <laughs> How are you, Rita? I'm good. I'm good. good. How are you? I'm, I'm okay, thanks. Yeah, but that doesn't matter. It's about you. Uh, so listen, you're an unusual kind of person to become a poet in a way, because you left school at 14, didn't you? And you wouldn't have been extremely literate at that point. I did. I left school early, but that's what people did at the time, I thought. And you know, there were a lot of factories, shirt factories and buckle factories, and you went and you worked in the factories, and that's what you did. And yeah. Um, you went on from there if you were lucky, and uh, I was lucky in that I got TB. It was a that's a stroke of luck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a it was a nice it was a delicious disease for me in a way because um, you'd get very high with the with the sw night sweats, and they were often like a catatonic, yeah, not a, you know, an hallucinogenic hallucinogenic kick. Oh, oh really? Yeah. So they were yeah. quite delicious. And uh, so it was fortunate in, in other ways in that I, I had had Heather, that was after the birth of Heather, that was the unfortunate, you know, it was bad to have a disease after a baby, but it was good to have a disease that would make you go on to maybe do, do other things. So after the TB ward, I, I went to a writing workshop and, um, you know, I started writing prose and people in the workshop said, you know, you're, you're getting your tenses mixed up. You're, you have the past and the present and the future. You know, wake up like, you have to <laughs> learn something. So anyway, I just thought it would be easier to write poetry. You see, now you've insulted all the poets now because you're suggesting that basically, well, look, guys, if you can't string together a proper <laughs> sentence, go, go for the poetry. <laughs> you can do what you want in the poetry. I show. know, it's yeah, the yeah. effects of the green. It's what they do to you in the green room before you get on here. No, no, it, 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 was, a, it was a good... Well, what they give you out there doesn't compare with the night sweats, no. It wouldn't give you that kind of... <laughs> no, no, nothing compares. It's, it's not bad. No, but it was, it was the, the writing workshop and it was... It was good, and I started to read poetry then, and then I discovered all these. I remember saying to Mike Allen, uh, he, was, he, he was married to Jessie Lindenny, who was of Salmon Publishing at the time, and I remember saying to him, who, who, who are these people in the poems that people write? And there was Zeus, and all these, car he said, they're from Greek mythology. And I had no idea what that was, and so... I went to the children's library and, and got out children's books on Greek mythology and started to read the Iliad and the Aeneid. And it's actually a great way to do it, isn't it? It's a it? wonderful they're, they're way to do it. They're hard going, that, you know, that They're stuff, very yeah. hard going. They're even hard going now as, you know, as, as someone who can read now. I still find it challenging to read Homer. Yeah. But it's easier to read it in the, in the children's library. And if you, you get the basic story, you might miss out on a bit of nuance. Exactly, like, and you, I don't you... mind the spoiler. I never mind knowing the ending, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. And listen, I suppose another thing about you is, no, I admit I wouldn't read uh, a, a lot of poetry and I find it kind of hard going, a lot of it. But I've read a, a few of your books now o over Christmas. And the great thing about you is you're quite accessible, not just in the way you write, but you also write very much about the stuff of of ordinary life really don't you and you write about i suppose the, your your experience of your family and our ordinary life growing up and then mm -hmm. kind of written a lot about the celtic tiger in in recent mm -hmm. years and sex and all that kind of stuff that people can relate to isn't it well i i hope so um they say you write what you know but the sex can often be in the head do you know what i right. mean so we're just <laughs> <laughs> So we just put that. We just put that okay. out there. Actually, you know what? Would you? There, there's a. There, you're going to read a couple of poems. Okay. The first poem that uh, Rita Anne is going to read is quite short. It's called Tongued and Grooved, and um, look, kids mightn't get it, but maybe if there are kids in the room, <laughs> my you, kids are in the room. Oh, oh geez, right. Lock your ears, guys. Yeah, okay? they'll be. You're, mammy's going to be filthy now. Yeah, right? they, they'll be going la 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 la. Anyway, tongued and grooved. The look was longing, was lustful, was lasting. The kiss was luscious, was lazy, was luptuous. She staggered away, was woozy, was wanton, was wet. Come on, 
You know what I mean? <laughs> so that's the uh, uh, <laughs> And actually, actually, lop, lopchus isn't a word, it's a made up word. So Yeah, so it's nice though. I'll tell you what, with a little bit of economy and great restraint there, that actually said more than a lot of much longer form prose writing about sex, didn't it? It was just well, a lovely well, kind of well, so, of well it was a moment. It was a, a moment, moment, and that's exactly. what poetry is sometimes it's all, it's all sometimes can be really, about to, to yeah. capture a moment, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I have to admit, I, I, I kind of feel I have a dose of the night sweats after that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want a glass? Can I help you? I just throw over my head. I think. <laughs> Listen, um, anyway, you were in Vegas. Now, again, you see, I can't see Michael D like whooping it up down the strip in Vegas. I'd imagine it's not a poet, a very poet friendly place, but no, how did it work it with your poetic sensibilities? Uh, don't underestimate Michael D, first of all. I never would. Uh, you think he'd like Vegas, yeah? Well, I think that he's a fun person. He is that. I think he it's is true. a fun yeah. person, and you know. Anyway, Vegas, uh, you would never see a book in Vegas, but you're not going to Vegas to see books, mm -hmm. are you? Like, no, no. You go to Vinnie Burns, if you want. I don't know. I, I believe <laughs> that we have some kind of oh, miraculous event mar happening <laughs> here. I, I think we do. I think we will have pilgrims coming here tomorrow, what, what, is, whatever's it's going like on confession. here. It's like confessing. I'd say Holy Mary could be crying after that poem. <laughs> Oh, don't that say that. Manon Heron has come to this filth. Don't, <laughs> don't say that to me now because I'm driven by guilt. No. Yeah, it's, I, I, anyway. Um, I, <laughs> so, so anyway, we, um, we, we, went to, we went to Vegas. It was our, it was our 40th wedding anniversary. Uh, it was really the girls that were pushing us towards it because Christy had been sick in, in the past and then he had another scare. In 2013, he got sepsis after a prostate test in, in, in Galway Hospital and he had to go back into hospital. And I thought, oh my God, back in again. So this was 2013 and we had left all, he had been in well and he had had cancer and got well and then got sepsis. And we thought, you know, we'd, we better do something, celebrate this. So we went to, we went to Vegas and um, we, we, we renewed our, our uh, wedding vows. It's lovely, and I think we have a picture of it actually. Look at that, the little church of the West, was it? it yeah, I think that's what it's called. The little, which, which white, is, is it the little church of the West, yeah. Yeah, which is well known for a few reasons, it's isn't it? It's well known because uh, we got married there. <laughs> 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 no, no, it's well known because a, a, a lot. <laughs> I knew I'd heard of it somewhere, and that's it. Yeah. A, a lot I read in the social columns no, about a, a lot of, A lot of uh, famous people got married there, like uh, Sinead O'Connor, and can you think of the oh, other? Listen, that's a good pedigree then, <laughs> no, But it? there's a yeah. whole list of but they're online. So you... Uh, <laughs> she listen at this... Why, why bother talking? She said they can look up anything. I know but, loads of famous people, but I can't think of them. You're, you're grand. Because the main thing that you brought home from Vegas, I know, is that you got a bit traumatised, did you, oh, by the trip to the Grand did. Canyon? Yeah, so we and had it made the, you sick. So we had the I do, I do, I do, I do, I do, one day. And then the next day, we, we did the Grand Canyon in a chopper. And it was magnificent, you know, when you're going, you go into the Grand Canyon yeah. and it's all very well. You see the Hoover Dam and you see the Mead River, I think it's called. And then she's telling you, our pilot was a young woman and the six in, the, in the, the chopper and you hope they're all little skinny people because chopper, you know, like, you know, Americans. not to be, not to be, uh, not to be weightist or whatever the mm -hmm. word is. Mm -hmm. So, so you're going, you're going just, you go into the Grand Canyon and it is the money shot. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And everything, you know, it's wonderful. And I loved it and I love, so, so you go into the Grand Canyon for a while and then you, there's a, a stop. They, they don't stop in there, like there's yeah, a yeah. shop. <laughs> there's a shop up, up on top. And uh, Christy got me these earrings in the shop and they were hand, Handmade and hand painted by uh, Indians. By, by I don't want to pronounce the Indians because yeah. I will do. I won't do it right. But yeah. Indians live on the. The Inukahula. Exactly. Yeah. You're, you're so <laughs> clever. You. I should have known. <laughs> so anyway, so so we got the little earrings, and then we go back, and the pilot tells us that uh, she has to pick up her kids, 
and that she's taken us back a different route. She's taken us back the strip, by, by the strip Vegas, like, you know, so yeah. I thought, that's, well, that's lovely. You know, you wouldn't be nervous if a person was telling you they had to pick up their kids. And so it was lovely coming back and uh, you could see the purples, the rocks, oh, it was beautiful colors and everything. And then the next day, I had all these blisters on my back and I was so ill and yeah, that wasn't funny. <laughs> Somebody laughed when I said this. So anyway, yeah, what people laugh at nowadays. I know. So I had, I had shingles and a, and a right, right dose of them. And it's, it's a sore thing, It's a it? very sore thing, yeah. but I was lucky. I, I went to the cure man. Well, I mean, I went to the doctor at home and everything. I got medication and all that. Obviously. And, and Jennifer said to me, like, well, you know something what people don't realise is if you leave it 72 hours, you have to get your antiviral medication within 72 hours or you can develop this something, something neuralgia, something. Right. Right. So uh, that's obviously. So you missed the window. Missed the window and um, got really, really sick with this nerve pain, nerve ending pain. It was going up in under the back of my nipple, actually, to, to say that. That's not funny no, either. Like, you no. know, what's wrong with this? What audience? kind of say this? Sorry, like, <laughs> Jesus, yeah. um, You went to the cure man. Oh, I went to the cure man. Yeah. So, so we went to the doctor and we got the, uh, the painkillers and everything. And you have to hide them when you have two daughters in the house. You know what I mean? You hide the painkillers. Are, the girls, are the, the girls mad for the pills? Well, no, yeah. you have to hide them. Anything with a doll at the end of it, like Salva doll, blah, blah. Anything with a doll, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I thought they seemed a bit zoned out. Yeah, right, I seemed, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so Jennifer said to me, so the pain still, I was a solid month lying down over Christmas. I wasn't anywhere. This is my first outing today, apart from a run-in. Is it everything you dreamed of? <laughs> <laughs> the night is young, yeah. <laughs> so, so Jennifer said, you know, you still have the pain, you, you look like whatever, and you're wrecked and I was very, it was malaise and I was really exhausted and really and she said will you go to the cure man and I said who's the cure man and so she made a few calls and she went and had a bath in our house, she wouldn't have a bath in her own house and she, yeah, she went up and had a bath and she rang me from upstairs and she said the cure man will see you at half six yeah. and I thought oh my god and, she, and I, I explained to her that I couldn't actually wear a bra for, for the month because of the pain, yeah. laughing, yeah. and uh, <laughs> I don't know what kind of an audience you So she said, don't worry, he won't, he'll blow it to your mouth, he'll blow it to <laughs> She said, he'll blow it to your mouth, he won't, to, you know. So yeah. I said. He blows, uh, this is what he does. This yeah. is what she, right. she said, the cure man blows it to your mouth. And All I right. said, you know. Last time you will have a bath in our house. So anyway, we went. Uh, <laughs> so we so we went to the we went to the cure man, and uh, we, he he was out past out, out past the airport, and every bump in the car was killing me. That was so yeah. sore, and so I wasn't two minutes in the house, and his his head was up. Under <laughs> my, <laughs> he, he was like a dash hound. He, his head was up <laughs> under my sweater and he was, he was blowing on the shingles. So I oh. thought he, he's blowing on the shingles so he knows I, I don't have a bra on. So, so anyway, but he, but he was, so he had to come round the front okay. and, and he blew and he blew and she blew and she blew. So anyway, he was amazing. He was absolutely... What, was it good? It was good. <laughs> It did, was it, good did it work for, for you? It was good for me. Yeah. It was, okay. I don't know. I'd, how say, it I'd was say it was all right for him as well. <laughs> Do you, are you sure he was a cure man? Or, well, I, uh, <laughs> I have no idea. But uh, you, by the way, I have healing hands as well. Just if you <laughs> still feel a bit. See, you seem the gullible type. So, no, listen. Not. Before you go, um, uh, because this is the best crack ever. I have to say, it's <laughs> it's kind of like one of my mother's younger friends, who's a great laugh. It's brilliant. But before you go, you you d you did write a lot about uh, the Celtic Tiger and the aftermath of it as well, and everything. And you were going to read a kind of a truncated version of another poem. This is uh, uh, a poem binders. about ghost estates, and it's very clean. It, it is, it is. The children may stay in the room. It's exactly. Actually, in a way, it's more obscene than the other poem, but it in is. a different way. It is, yeah. totally. The Builder's Mess, truncated version. Now that the bubbles burst, mother, the ghost estates are everywhere. Some were completed and vacant. 
some were found to be occupied, some were found to be empty and occupied, all at the same time, mother. Others were bought but never built, mother. And what did the sons and daughters of the Celtic tiger call them, mother? The ones who camped out in the floods to get the semi with the decking and the snooker table lawn, mother. The ones who queued with their deposits in their pockets, their unborn children up their sleeves, their shaved backsides hanging out. What did they call them, mother? They call them a travesty, mother. Excellent. Jean, can I ask you a question before you go? As a poet, because in many ways, like you kind of are, I suppose, you kind of hold the, the conscience and the psyche of the nation and also as, as a kind of an outsider who watches things. So I know you kind of, you've written about the age of religion that you grew up in a, a bit, I suppose, and mm -hmm. the, the, the time of religion and, and Pishogues equally and all that mm -hmm. stuff, right? And then you've uh, written about, I suppose we gave up on that and went, the other way and got into the materialism, which didn't really work out very well for us either. And is there a sense now, are we, are we at the dawning of a kind of a new paradigm? Are people looking for a new way of being that's somewhere between the two of them? Or where do you sense the psyche is at or where, where are we going next? Well, it's for, that's a huge question. Oh, like you left it to last. I know, and we only I have thirty seconds. By the way, <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's a hu that, that's huge, really. I do feel though that, like, I mean, I was thinking about the, the our elderly don't seem to be valued too highly anymore, and you know, our our the the our citizens aren't valued so well, and that's kind of disturbing. You know, with all the austerity measures, uh, you know the people with disabilities had to beg on the streets for a few euro outside the doll. We should never, ever, ever humiliate our citizens like that. So all that will bring about some kind of change. I don't know what it is, but it certainly was a very disturbing period and I don't think we've seen the last of it, you know. I don't know what's ahead. I don't, I'd, I'd love to be talking about hope and saying all the nice fluffy things. Yeah, but you don't, no, you don't. I think don't so believe well. it, to be really? honest with you. I really don't believe it. I think we, I think we have to start um, looking up to the elderly. You know, really, yeah, you think that, is that central to a kind of a healthy society? Well, think, I, I yeah? think that when we were growing up, we were taught to respect our, the, the elderly, you know, we have, yeah. and they seem to be sidelined and, you know, with that, that, those protests outside the doll when people were sitting in wheelchairs and they were looking for like a few euros for their taxis that, that was taken from them. That was absolute humiliation. We should never do that to our people. Our citizens aren't respected and we have to make sure that they are somehow. Okay. Rijan, it's been absolutely amazing talking to you. It's been a real pleasure. Been and I, I hope pleasure. you'll come back again. It's been I lovely. Do. Ladies Thanks and gentlemen, Rijan has Thank you.